It's Christmas time in War of the Visions and we've got two new units to decide whether or not you should pull. First up is Winter Mashery and then we have Winter Ramada. And I'm gonna, not gonna lie, neither of them look particularly prepared for the cold season, uh, but that doesn't matter. What does matter is their kits, their uh, comparisons to current units and uh, their new global upgrades. So let's take a look at them and more in this week's Should You Pull. Of course, we need to thank War of the Visions Calc for all the information for these units that grab all the images and stuff off of that website. Uh, so thank you so much for your tremendous work. Okay, let's start off by talking about Christmas Masharia. Well, she's got some stats and you know, you gotta think about when these units originally came out, which is the very first Christmas of the Japan uh, launch of the game. So they're actually super old and their stats kind of reflect that, particularly in the HP department because units uh, started off with lower HP and then we had kind of a boost at some point. So you can see that that's clearly reflected here, uh, but we can also see that, you know, the attack's not so bad crit rate is fine, uh, dexterity is low, uh, luck is just okay, and then agility again is low, although we will have some correction for that uh, in another way. So just quickly looking at uh, her jobs and stuff here, so Dragoon means you get your four jump, that's super important, and then everything else there is, is pretty standard. Viking and Ranger are very interesting sub jobs. Uh, and then she's going to get some more attack from her board, which is really nice. So we're definitely pretty psyched about her attack for now, although we'll see if we keep that level of psychitude uh, later on. Okay, so taking a look at her resistances, she is resistant to ice and then weak to water. That's pretty pretty standard. And here's the super interesting part. She has 20% slash resist. Whoa. She has 20% magic resist. Super whoa. And then minus 20 projectile, minus 20 striking. So that's pretty, that's pretty dangerous there. So obviously she's gonna get picked off by projectile users, although she has a Viking sub job, which means she can have some missile resistance there. We'll talk about that. But I would, I would say personally, I think Slash and then Magic are the two most popular attack types in the game. So to have those resistances there and she can build for those, uh, against those resistances, that's a really, really big deal. So uh, very, very intrigued by that. I, I do I do like the 20% magic resist as well on a physical attacker. That's something that we don't typically see and that could make her really interesting in compositions against magic users. And then she also gets that immobilized resistance, which is, is kind of niche, but it's good. Okay, and then her TMR is an accessory with okay stats, uh, but it restores AP to the people around Mashery, which is crazy. That's just really, really, really solid. Uh, it's a good TP cost, so, you know, that seems fine. Like, I think I'm definitely very interested in her TMR. Okay, so I'm skipping over her her master ability, don't fret, because we're gonna talk about it because it got upgraded for global. And what do I mean by that? Well, she got the classic treatment here of getting the the elemental boost to her allies, so fire units get HP up and a fire attack up by 15. Uh, and then she gets the ice resistances there, uh, so 10 more ice resistance, that's a total of 30. That's a pretty big deal considering we have a lot of ice units. Uh, that, that's pretty massive. And then here we go. She gets a little bit of agility and that is also important. All of her agility is on um, her base stats, which means that 10% is affecting um, the whole 52, which is pretty nice. And then here's another global upgrade that Japan did not get, which is defense piercing rate plus 10. And that's certainly welcome for her. Okay. So looking at her support skills, uh, there's a lot of interesting ones here. So the Dragoon ones are actually the ones that are like the least relevant most of the time. Uh, it's the Viking and the Ranger ones that I'm, I'm very interested in. So Viking lore getting that attack boost and we're gonna need that. Uh, so there's 24% attack there, 20% 20 from her board and then that's it. So definitely something to consider. Uh, Ranger lore and focus, those are really just important if you're subbing Ranger. So really, I think you're going for unyielding protection and Viking lore here uh, to get the missile resist. And once you have that unyielding protection, she's actually only 5% weak to missile. So not so bad after all. And then for the uh, counters, I mean, these are all good counters, but Reflex is the best counter in the game, so that's what you're gonna put on her. It's absolutely 
<laughs> the best. So uh, pretty insane to have her have reflex. As for Dragoon, and I'm sorry for the black spaces, those are redacted. I, I took this from War of the Visions Kelp and they have the EX skills and the upgrades and stuff. And I'm like, man, I, there's all these skills that I wasn't prepared for and then I realized that they are not the skills that I want to show you, so I had to black them out there. Uh, but this is all very standard for a Dragoon. The jump, horizontal jump, vertical jump, and Dragon's Dive, all on the main job. They're so generous. And then Dragon's Kin is your attack buff. If you want to sub Dragoon, you really just do that for Dragon Standard, and you're not going to do that unless you're playing manual PvP, uh, which is certainly a really good thing if you if you put that move up one and jump up one uh, that can really help you kind of uh, crash some people if they're not ready for you to like cross the map and then horizontal jump onto one of their units slaughtering them so that's definitely really good uh, but in auto the main reason to have dragoon sub job is not for these two skills which she'll never use it's to ensure that she's using jumps and not other skills instead so that's just something to consider as well Okay, Viking. Now this is interesting. So we've now we've got our second uh, attack type. We've got slash attack, and then you get a rebellious spirit buff, uh, warcry buff, and then three skills. And uh, I think launch is is pretty cool. Um, I like the crit rate on that. And knee breaker is okay, but there isn't like a ton jumping out here besides the rebellious spirit buff. Now Ranger, this is where I'm super interested. And in. you would turn off a bunch of these skills, uh, but to have the Vigilance, like I don't know again, I, I don't know if I'd use that, but Sharpshoot, that's the one we're talking about. Barrage, that's really good. Uh, poison Arrow, really niche, but kind of fun to use on certain enemies, especially in manual. Uh, but Sharpshoot, uh, Mastery being able to have a 100% hit attack is quite nice. And if you have other projectile units and you're boosting your projectile attack, then she can take advantage of that as well. She doesn't have any natural, like, pierce attack up like Victoria does so you're not as inclined to use her pierce skills her attack is going to help them all out so uh, this is definitely super interesting as a sub job and I think that's a sub job that a lot of people are going to want to experiment with. Now we'll talk about her limit break and we can see it's you know it's it's expensive uh, the range is just those two panels in front but it's very cool because it actually does, you know, it does okay damage. It increases defense by 20. So this is not amazing at all. But I do like, I, I, I like this theme. I like, I, like I love Elda's uh, limit break that she gives, gives him hate when he uses it. I think that's such a cool like type of limit break. I want to see more buffing limit breaks, um, although this is an attack as well. But uh, yeah, certainly nothing to uh, write home to your mother and or father or a uh, significant other, or, you know, whoever else you talk to War of the Visions about. Okay, so let's do some comparisons here. First up is Victora, and they look similar at first glance, except Victora is totally pump and mashery on HP, speed, and luck. Uh, but the attacks, they seem very similar, but there is something to consider. Victora, she'll get the 60% attack boost from self-sacrifice, which mashery does not get. Mashery can get 44% attack with her passives and her board. So th there's... There's like a little bit of a drop off from Victoria to Mashery in terms of total attack able, like, you know, able to stack. And then same thing with Glacella. Glacella gets, um, she gets attack from buffs. She gets attack from her master ability from her board, I think. So she gets, I think uh, Glacella gets a further 40% attack to be able to be stacked on top of her, her base there. So you can see that both Victoria and Glacella have more attack than Mashery. They can stack more attack, but they also have uh, Pierce attack up as well. So both of them get more Pierce attack from their passives, from their uh, their different buffs, whatever it is. Like there's, they both have things going on that give them more um, ways to stack damage than Mashery is going to. So Mashery is going to be weaker than these two, but she's going to make up for that with versatility of attack type. She's going to make up for that with her um, her master ability that supports the rest of your party. So you know, if if Mashery did not have the upgraded master ability that also had the defense piercing then you know you could definitely see where she drops off compared to these other units next up is christmas ramada and she she's a super interesting unit so again looking at the stats she's got low hp uh, and 
Super high attack. She looks a lot like our OG Stern, for sure. Some crit rate, you know, the high luck, the high agility. And she is a soldier with a subjob ninja, so a lot of similarities. Uh, but there are some differences as well. And with her upgrade, she can stack a lot of attack stats. So that's something to definitely consider. So we can see she's got the ninja sub and the monk sub, which I really, I really love. Um, the monk sub because no one's prepared for that type of damage and in in Ramada's case she's gonna have so much uh, attack that she could really do some damage with uh, with some monk skills um, so she uses great swords all the the stuff that you're expecting and then she gets luck so she gets more luck so I'm actually really interested she's got uh, she's got good agility and luck you know that makes a case for evade. I am not an evade expert, so I'm gonna leave that to you in the comments to kind of fill me in if you think that she's a good evade candidate. And, and obviously that would help her rating quite a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at her uh, her skills and her, her kit. Ah, I went too fast. Okay, so we've got uh, your, you know, your strength against fire, weakness against lightning, that's fine. It doesn't really matter as much for her weaknesses because she's gonna get you know killed by a light breeze uh, let alone an Orlando coming her way and then when you look at her resistances you know weak to magic again not a huge deal it's, it's what we're expecting uh, but strong against strike and make a little bit of slash resist is nice and then this is what I love the charm resist that is always welcome to see especially you know it's so important if you play uh, PvP or if or live PvP and then also the, you know in, in certain PvE events that can be important as well and then this is very interesting, her her TMR is a helm, so not everyone's going to be able to equip that, but uh, it gives a bunch of attack and then it gives move and I, I, love, I love skills, there's not many that will give you a move because that's really a lot of units biggest weakness and she already has ninja which means she already has four move if, if she needs to so that's definitely very cool to see and if you're curious about who can equip that. Well, I'll put that up there and if you can pause the video, you can see if your favorite unit can equip this helm or not. Uh, but I definitely see a few uh, units there that I would love to stick this on. Okay, so her global upgrade, second master ability. And this kind of includes her, it, they really what they're saying here is that these are all of her master abilities. So she gets water uh, units will get the 10% uh, magic up and then water attack plus 15. And then if you take a look, then uh, we've got the critical rate up 10 and attack up 20%. Now let's go back a sec. So we used to, the critical rate, that's the same. Instead of getting 10% attack on her master ability, now she gets 20%. So very, very cool to stack that, that attack up. Okay. And then in terms of support abilities, there's a lot of very, very good ones because she has some good subs. So uh, Shadow Runner, excellent. Stacking more agility and luck. That's just what you want for evade. Uh, and then self sacrifice again, making her more of a glass cannon, but getting 60% attack. Uh, Shukuchi, super relevant for certain maps, uh, very important for her to close down enemies and kill them because she'll die so quickly. You definitely want to have a tank, uh, for example. And then HP up, that's actually relevant because she's a drain force user, although her, her HP is low. And then strike attack up, if you were using a monk, then you definitely want to consider using this. Her counters are also interesting. So Poison Bar, people tell me this is good and I, I just haven't experimented with enough with it. What's really important to think about is you have to, there's a chance to proc it, the, and then there's also a chance to inflict poison. So you have to go through two lotteries to, to get this to work. What's actually really interesting here is Fist Counter because again, it's an alternate damage type, but she has to survive to counter. So I'm not really worried about these counter abilities that much. As for her uh, soldier job, again, we got some redacted stuff from the EX jobs here, I'm sorry. But it's all very standard, very similar stuff that we're used to seeing. And uh, you know, you got your drain force there and your hazard break and your grim reaper and all that. And if you want a sub, well, you're gonna get hazard spin and paralyzing edge and, and hard slash. And these are all powerful attacks. You can get some AOE, you can get some range. Uh, that's definitely a very strong consideration to put her sub soldier. If you were going evade, then maybe you'd go sub ninja, or if you wanted to get through certain skills, uh, then maybe you might go with Sutan there uh, to get through the uh, different damage resistances. And then otherwise, uh, she gets a dream within a dream, which is actually very cool because that's a three chain attack. So now we have a three uh, slash chain water unit. Uh, definitely something to consider, definitely something to good to have for a raid. So just like Mastery, we're getting a lot of utility out of the sub jobs. 
and then monk uh, this is this is cool so uh, all these monk skills obviously people aren't prepared for strike resistance but you also so you get a little bit of range you get some alternate damage types and then boom we get store and I just think this is really cool even with her slash skills for her to have store that's a hundred and fifty percent attack on top of all the attacks she already gets that's just crazy the amount of attack that you can uh, stack so she's got a very interesting special as well but man is that expensive at 63 ap but the attack okay it's it's decent damage but decrease slash resistance 38 percent for three turns for the targets that's a really big deal so if you could bells this out and then use it with you know Gilgamesh you could do some serious slash resistance decreasing and then you know really hammer through some tanks it's definitely cool the the range is also very interesting it's kind of a weird uh, like area that it can it can hit in but then you get that AoE so I definitely think there's some applications for this obviously you're gonna have to have bells on for this to be anywhere near a regular thing that you do but I definitely it's definitely very appealing as a limit break okay so we're gonna do the comparisons now and I want you to take these with a grain of salt for example we've got stern and ruin stern and we can look at the attack there so Romana has got she's got more attack than ruin stern but less than stern but remember we have all of our passives and our active skills and all these things to consider but otherwise she compares very very similar to uh to the og stern like they're honestly super similar in in their jobs and in their stats and i guess that kind of makes sense and then obviously ruin stern gets uh, uh a lot of uh other stuff going on but i just wanted to put them there for the comparison and i'll do a little bit more about their passives in a second and then I also wanted to show Aldoa because, I mean, you have to, right? She's also a soldier. She also gets Drain Force. And you can see that she also compares very similar to uh, Ramadan. Like, there's not a lot. The, the agility is high. The luck is high. Uh, the dexterity is is so-so. Uh, she's got a little less strength than uh, Ramada does. But Aldoa gets a boatload of um, AP generation. So, you know, there's kind of a trade-off there. So what we're actually going to look at here is how can they stack their attack stat. And we can see they all get some form of self-sacrifice, you know, Stern's uh, Ruin or, or Knight of Ruin Stern is he gets a better one and gives him less uh, decrease in his resistances. But then Ramada's got 80% from Master Ability and Self-Sacrifice, which you're going to have equipped. That's 80% um, with only having to tie up one passive, whereas Aldoa to get over 80%, she needs to, she's tied to two specific passives. And then Stern, he can't even get to 80, he has 60%. And same thing with Knight of uh, Ruin Stern, he's gotta, you know, he's gotta use two passives to match that. So you can see that she can stack a lot of, uh, a lot of attack and then when you look at the active skills everybody has some form of like you know hazard form war of ruin whatever but then store like that is just going to be insane i can see these crazy um matches where she uses store and then attacks and just does like a bonkers amount of damage so definitely she's going to be a very very powerful unit there's no there's absolutely no doubt about that so the question is, should you pull? And for Ramada, I, I've got to say no. And the reason is mostly because she's limited. And I know that that's kind of like a cop out because that's not going to affect everybody. But she's just really a niche for a limited unit. If you were able to get her later or work on her slowly, but you know, to dump in a bunch of Vizior for a glass cannon uh, when you know there's so many guaranteed hits and there's going to be more in the future. There's magic guaranteed hits which she's weak to. Uh, I just really think that that's not going to be the best investment for most players. I think that if you were building a water team, I think that yeah, if you were building you know a very specific uh, team that can protect her or can divert attention from her then yeah she's gonna be really interesting and she's gonna give you like a bunch of things that she can do with her, her you know her ninja abilities and like just the amount of attack that she can do like maybe she's gonna be really good in raids and she could be really fun in tower but i just think that in terms of like the average player i don't think it's worth the investment 
Now, Mashri, she is really interesting. So like we talked about, I'm going to say maybe for her, like we talked about, she doesn't quite have the firepower that the other spear users, uh, you know, and I didn't compare her to Kane, and some of you are going to get at me in the comments for that. Uh, but we know Kane is really strong. We just did a Kane comparison video with those other units, and then now we're comparing her to those other units. And I thought that was more appropriate because she came out so early in Japan that you know, yeah, she's gonna be weaker than Kane, and we can see that she's weaker than the two units that came after her in Japan as well, but now she has that master ability. So, for example, with me, I'm, a, I'm not gonna pull for her, but let's say I'm pulling for my, you know, party night, holy po whatever it's called, the holiday party night, or you know, for the Eldira card, and I pull her by accident, I pull Mastery, you know what, I'm gonna build her, because I have a fire team, I wanna build her with, like, Rain and Delita, and make a fire team. But, am I actually gonna pull for her? No, because I just, I think, I think even with her her master her new master ability, I think that you know again limited unit uh, and she doesn't fill any new roles that we can't already you know a lot of people have filled a lot of people have Victoria a lot of people just pulled for Kane uh, so unless you want to go for a Pierce team a fire team or maybe you're just really really into the fact that she gets that 20% magic resistance and 20% slash resistance and the fact that she gets projectile skills uh then yeah then again you can pull for her but i just I, I really don't think right now that these two are are really what most accounts are going to need and i'm going out on a limb and saying that so you know that's why they pay me the little bucks is is to give my opinion so uh that's gonna be it and i'm sure i want to hear from you guys because i'm sure there's going to be some differing opinions uh i mean these and again these units are both interesting and they're both good like there's no bad unit in war divisions but i really have to be honest on, on what i think you know, if I'm going to make a re recommendation, it's not going to be to, to chase these units. Uh, so good luck if you do pull for them, and then otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.